Yeah, and, uh, silly painting. Yeah, now that Halloween is officially <laughs> over. Yeah, Halloween. <laughs> yeah, gay Christmas. Yeah, right. Gay Christmas. Is there gonna be, yeah, gonna be a gay parade today? Of course. Are you gonna talk about that? No. Oh, good. I don't want to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, trick or treat. On me, not in me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break and we'll be back right after these words. Bags. Yeah. <laughs> you are listening to the Howard Stern Show. Let's return to the Howard Stern Show. Want to call uh, Corey Feldman and congratulate him on his series being canceled? Oh, it was canceled. Yeah. I just got a peek at it for the first time this past week. It's gone already. Yeah, I never got to see it. Oh boy. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> eh, leave him alone. Oh come on. Yeah, we'll see. He always wants to be on the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> you know, he's always calling, trying to get on. I get these faxes once in a while, like companies that issue memos that say that people at, in the company are not allowed to listen at uh -huh. work to our show. Oh, really? Yeah. Got one? Yeah, it's kind of funny. But it, what's even funnier is some of the, the stuff you have to tell employees in big companies, like what to do and what not to do. Because you know how there's always some pains in the asses who always abuse all the privileges? Yeah, those people who must be told. Yeah, because evidently, according to this memo, what must happen is, like this is a service business and people are listening to our show. Instead of serving? Well, you, you know, if you get in the middle of something cool, it's like you don't want to rip yourself away from it. So, like, they're like, you know, people are online waiting and someone's sitting there listening to us. <laughs> so, you know, you got to write a memo saying, do not listen to... Do your job. Right. Then it also says, um, what's acceptable, what's not, besides our show. Okay, what is it? Like, you must be neat, you must clean after yourself, and eating lunch is evidently a big problem at this company, because people sneak me these memos. Um... Eating lunch at your desk is acceptable. Sushi and tuna fish is acceptable. Evidently, they must have had some issue with fish. Because there's no fish or onions allowed at your desk. But sushi is acceptable. Hmm. No smelly foods. Eating with a group of employees at your desk is okay. Oh, no, it's not okay. Heated foods are not okay. Filling your desk with food is not okay. Popping bubblegum is not okay. You know, these are things you sort of know, but, you know, they got to lay it out because some guy will do it and say, hey, you never told me not to. Um, no full course meals at your desk. No, you can't no. have the three courses. You, you can't have like a soup, a, a main salad. course. Yeah, right. <laughs> main course and dessert. Right. If you violate it, handicap employees who ca cannot carry their lunch. Uh, are the exception to these rules. And you got to write that because, like, some handicapped guy will wheel into your office and go, Hey, man, I just got this memo, and, you know, I'm in a wheelchair, man. I'm suing you. Or other people say, Why, why does he get to do it? Yeah. <laughs> guy, meanwhile, has no legs or arms. <laughs> so it's like a 12 page memo on how to behave like a rational human being. But you got to give it to your employees, or else, they'll, you know, you know, they'll do something wacky. Robin also gave me a fact that John Wayne Bobbitt has a new medical problem. Uh, we had John Wayne Bobbitt on the air. He said that he was, you know, that's the guy who got his penis cut off. And he came in and he says he's going to go for penis extension work. Yeah, he was going to have it lengthened and fattened. Thickened. So I called him and I said, yeah, what are you doing? You're lucky you got your penis back and it works. Why don't you leave it alone? He goes, no, I want a bigger penis, the whole thing. And uh, he went in and had the operation. And it's, this, this guy, John Wayne Bobbitt, he does not stay out of the news. He says he wants to, um, he has a problem now due to his penis enlargement. And what is the problem? It has left him with an open wound that is not healing properly. Oh. Oh. Now, Bobbitt, when we talked to him, his girlfriend said it was working. I don't know. I don't know. Bobbitt said they, he, he went to see, he wants to go see his doctor in Las Vegas for treatment. But there's a court order against him going into Las Vegas until he pays $5,000 that he owes in child support because you found out that he had a child with another woman. Right. He didn't even know it was his kid. Right. He has a nearly three-year-old son. He's never been in control of that penis of his. <laughs> no. Bobbitt's penis was cut off. It was later reattached by surgeons. You now think says, that'd be enough. Now, it says here, a couple of the stitches have come out and local doctors won't see him. Now, it doesn't say anything about his penis extension. It might be from his original... 
Uh-oh. operation. Yeah, but it wasn't open before he had the penis enlargement. I, I, Robin, listen, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Hey, Gary, see if you can get John Wayne on the phone. The way it looks, his penis is in bad shape and his whole life is in bad shape. <laughs> Nothing's working. <laughs> There's a gaping hole in his wallet he can't deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he needs the medical attention of his doctor. And uh, they're saying now that the court is trying to decide whether or not to let John Wayne Bobbitt get his penis uh, looked into. Oh, Which is, isn't it incredible? That you, your life becomes so complicated and full of trouble that you can't even leave town to go see your doctor about your penis without getting a, a, but the permission the of another man. penis is always in the middle of everything. It's, yeah. it's very funny, too. It's constant penis stuff <laughs> with this guy. Yeah, I mean, your penis really is biologically in the middle of everything. Uh-huh. And uh, in his life, it's in the middle of everything. That's right. It's at the bottom of every problem. Yes. <laughs> everything traces back to this guy's penis. I mean, it's amazing. It's just karma. And he won't leave it alone. Won't leave it alone. He didn't have to have this new surgery, but he had to do it. You even warned him. Why are you doing that? Yeah, I said, listen, dude. What you, I mean, you're so desperate for the public attention. You know what happens? A guy like him gets in the public's eye, and he likes it, and he's all of a sudden famous for getting his penis cut off. And then suddenly you're left with, like, well, how do I maintain this fame? you got to keep doing things to your penis. Yeah. <laughs> and now the guy really, I mean, what is left to do to this penis? Pretty soon there'll be nothing left. Right. One <laughs> Right. Oh, my goodness. So, well, we have to see if we can find him. I don't know. I don't Gary know is, is trying to track him down. All right. All right. In the meantime, let's get to other news, Robin. What else is Well, uh, oh, O.J. is oh, in oh. the news. O.J. OJ has signed a deal, apparently, or is about to sign a deal to go to some uh, autograph show in Atlantic City. It'll I'll never happen. You. It will never happen. The show is scheduled for February 24th at the Atlantic City Convention Center. The person who put all the arrangements together say they're supposed to be says they're supposed to be some kind of a signing today to finalize the deal. They already have all the particulars arranged. OJ has the right to reject anything that he would not like to sign. Like a knife? Yeah, if somebody comes up with something <laughs> OJ deems inappropriate, then he doesn't have to sign it. You have to uh, pay $135 for flat items to be signed by OJ. I say that again, how much? 135 For a flat item? For a flat item. What's a flat item? A Knife. picture. I see. Knife. A knife. Knife, Knife is not flat. I don't think you'll go for that. Or my book. Oh. Uh, yeah. How great would that be? You could take this book. Okay, has anyone seen the back cover of my book with me and uh, O.J. on the Trump? Uh, well, obviously, I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. you will but see it. You could have O.J. sign that, I suppose. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah. Maybe I should go there and have O.J. sign it. Oh, yeah. Man. Why that's, not? Imagine how valuable that would be. O.J. signing the back of my book. Oh, boy. With me and him clutching each other, saying, getting away with murder. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see you get that sign. <laughs> I want to be right there. <laughs> Look out. Look out. $185 for football equipment. Jock straps. His friend Al Callings will be there with him. AC. I even heard reports that he would sign pictures of the Bronco Chase. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> I mean, what's the point if you can't get that? You could also have the small sign photos sold by mail order, and they'll go for one hundred twenty nine ninety five. The larger ones, one hundred fifty nine ninety five. Shame on anybody who shows up; they get pay one hundred twenty nine bucks for that. That jackass is. I saw a great letter in the newspaper the other day. I think I brought it in. I got to read this to you. You're going to love this. You know, because you kind of OJ'd out, and you know, everyone's made every point there is to make, but yeah. This guy made kind of a cool letter out of it. He goes, uh, O.J. Simpson is to be commended for saying, I will pursue as my primary goal in life to find the killer or killers who slaughtered Nicole and Mr. Goldman. Yes. O.J., you could be of great help to the FBI and police because who better than you might know someone with a motive and could tell authorities of any enemies of Nicole who threatened violence. Did she ever mention someone who would kill her and get away with it? Find that person. <laughs> O.J., you could help the cops look for a man with large size Bruno Maglia shoes and extra large expensive gloves similar to what Nicole bought. 
Tell them to look for hair fibers very, very similar to your own. Suggest that the cops look for a fugitive from justice who drives a white Bronco and wrote a suicide note after learning of Nicole's death. The suspect probably had a disguise and doubtless was rich enough to have $10,000 in an envelope with his passport. The cops might discover the suspect was uninterested in how or where or when your wife died. O.J., tell the cops how angry you were that the killer got in your house, spread the blood of the two victims upstairs, and mixed it with yours. Maybe the FBI could find the crooked cop who planted the blood. Find the guy in the store who sharpened and sold that big serrated knife, you know, that, uh, that should be questioned. He said he saw and talked to the real guy. Go with your task force looking for the killer. Check out the upstairs bathroom in the mirror by the shower. And while you're talking with the cops, look for Nicole's killer. Take a long, hard look in the mirror. You should call the FBI quickly. As there's talk, the perpetrator may be escaping to Mexico. That's from uh, Haskell Wexler <laughs> in Santa Monica. That's, That's pretty good. good That's pretty cool, isn't it? I thought that was a good letter. Meanwhile, O.J. wants his stuff back in Los Angeles today. Simpsons lawyers will ask the prosecutors to give back his belongings taken during the murder investigation. I would Judge love to. Lance Ito will preside. Hmm. Prosecutors still have golf shoes, credit cards, a cellular phone, a gun, and ammunition, a fake goatee, and a $5,000 check. Want that stuff back. They were taken from his home and his Ford Bronco. It's Halloween. He wants. I would love my fake goatee back for Halloween. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> the uh, DA's office did return a passport and football Hall of Fame ring after they found uh, O.J. innocent of murder. But they won't turn over these other things. And that's why they're having this property hearing. I see. They also say that O.J. recently took one of the tabloids reported on O.J.'s uh, recent visit to Nicole's grave site. Mm -hmm. And everybody's complaining because O.J. didn't shed a tear and he didn't bring flowers. I mean, you know, everybody grieves in a different way. Yeah, O.J. has his way of grieving. <laughs> you can't say just because a guy didn't cry and he didn't bring flowers that he's not into it. Yeah, but you think he's right that he urinated on his wife's grave? <laughs> that would teach you to talk back. I told you I'd get away with it. <laughs> they said a few hours later he was out at some club party. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to, and he went to a club? Yeah. And people don't leave? I guess not. They said Sucks. Arnell was there and O.J. was, you know, was there at the time. Arnell. Arnell. Meanwhile, back to this... Um... Arnell from the planet Krypton. <laughs> back to the signing thing. Somebody faxed this to me. They said they were looking through a catalog of autographs and they thought you might be interested in what your autograph goes for. I would love to. You. Your autograph is to. valued at $95. Yeah. Other people whose autographs cost $95? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Ava Gardner. Burt Lancaster. Ava Gardner. Robert Redford. Steven Spielberg. Sylvester Stallone. Ava Gardner. Ed Sullivan. Rock Hudson. And Whitney Houston all go for $95. Whitney Houston. People whose autographs cost less than yours? Eric Clapton, $75. David Bowie, $75. Lee Marvin, $75. Lee Marvin. Eddie Murphy, $75. Paul Newman, $75. Gregory Peck, Vincent Price, William Shatner, Tom Hanks, George Lucas, Clint Eastwood, Robert De Niro, Cecil B. DeMille, or Cecil B. DeMille. How much is Jackie's? Lawrence Olivier. Oh, $5. Goes for $75. Lawrence Olivier goes for $65. I'll give you $5 for my autograph. $5. Bert Reynolds. Jackie, you pay, $5. Jackie will pay for his own autograph. Yeah, I'll pay you $5. I'll ask you for my autograph. <laughs> Lawrence Olivier. $65. Burt Reynolds only $35. And James Garner, who wants bad mouths you on the Tonight Show. Yeah. 30 bucks. I right know. People who get more for their autograph than you. Madonna, $250. Frank Sinatra, $250. Frank Zappa, $295. Frank Zappa, yeah, well, there's, there's, a, there's a big demand. Barbara Streisand, $250. Paul McCartney, $350. Yeah. Jerry Garcia, $195. Michael Jackson, $250. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Mick Jagger, $175. <laughs> Bob Dylan, $350. Liz Taylor, two fifty. Kurt Cobain, two fifty. Demi Moore, one hundred twenty-five. And Marlon Brando, a whopping five 
$595. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a good price uh, to get for an autograph, 95 bucks. I read uh, mine was 135 bucks in another autograph place. Yeah? Yeah. So that's good. Interesting. No wonder people line up to get a book, Sonny. I like 135 bucks. <laughs> I, I predict on my next book, the trick will be to get, because, you know, I'm, we're all in drag across the end papers uh -huh. in color. Yeah. You know, I predict it'll be the trick to get everyone's signature on that page. You think so? And, and it'll be, that'll be... The hard part will be getting Fred. <laughs> because Fred is That's very hard to find. One to get? Fred is worse than Brando. He's always in hiding. <laughs> Fred Morris. Speaking from the line. He doesn't circulate much. That's right, Robin. So anyway, that's what's uh, that's the latest on OJ that he's got this uh, signing supposedly coming up, and that he wants his stuff back. Did you also hear the other day? I forgot to mention this that in the depositions and all of that stuff for um, the civil suits coming up. Yes. They're trying to keep everything sealed. You know, like if OJ has to answer questions, they don't want anything leaking out. I want it on TV. <laughs> so that was very interesting that his lawyers were moving to keep all of that stuff very, very secret. Well, I don't know why they're worried. Uh, he's innocent. He uh, didn't do it. Why I worry? What fear. could harm him? OJ, where were you that night? I plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Unfortunately, you can't plead the fifth when you get into the courtroom. I would love to plead the fifth. Yesterday, they had a big <laughs> vote in Quebec, Canada, and by a narrow margin, they voted to remain a part of the country. Wow. Of course. Here is the sound of people partying at the Vote No headquarters. The Vote No headquarters. Oh, no, eh? No, number three. All right. Take a listen to this. We never go to any good parties. Hey, there's OJ. I would love to party. I'm at a club now. Will you want to coucher avec moi? I would love to. It must be cold out there. Oh, oh. And they were all very happy that the hot people voted no. <laughs> Jean Chrétien, the oh. Prime Minister of Canada, said it's time to heal no. after the divisive vote. All right, let's see what he has to say. We have come through a difficult time. A time of great emotions. Great emotions. Now, we must look towards innovative solutions so that we no longer have to come back into the same kind of an existential crisis. I dig the uh, guy, I, you know, who was that, the mayor? That was the prime minister. Prime minister. I dig her, but who's that annoying guy in the background? <laughs> <laughs> that guy should shut up and show some respect. The prime Minister's the guy in the background oh. interpreting what he said. Oh, you should have told me that. Now I look like a fool. Here is the leader of the uh, party or the group that was trying to have Quebec to be from Canada, Lucien Bouchard. See? Gisola! Gisola! Let us tell them. Let us tell them, my friends, that they do not have, as they had hoped, they have not achieved what they had hoped for, which was to uproot the sovereignty. All these girls have these annoying guys behind them. That is still in the hearts of too many Quebecers, too many for it to simply die away. Quite the contrary, it is more alive than it ever has been before. I don't know. The yes have never been I cannot concentrate on what she's saying with him yapping in the background. It's like if we did the show and had someone talking behind us. I don't know. Take off your top, eh? Yeah. You have a beautiful set of this. People ask me, what, Howard, what is the significance of this? What does it mean to us as Americans? Well, let me, let me uh, tell you what it means. Some of you don't even care that Quebec was about to secede from Canada and become its own state. Own country? Own country, rather. Why do you say, it doesn't mean squat to me? And you know what, you're right, it doesn't mean squat to you. It doesn't really. I mean, it's important for our trade agreements and cars, and we sell a lot of cars to Canada and vice versa, and it would affect, the, you know, all these speculations on what it would mean. But that's not what it really means to us. What it means to us is that 50 or 60 years from now, when Robin and I will no longer be here to expose the truth because we will be buried 
side by side, which I want to talk to you about. Oh, really? Yes. I'm going in the plot with you? Yes. I want to be, I'm not talking about being in the next plot. I'm talking about you being in, in my coffin. Box. Yeah, I'm going to suck you in with me. You're going to be eternally wrapped around me. I you go. That's right. Well, whoever, what would be the use of Whoever goes first throws themselves on top of the other one and gets buried. Uh, by the way, I'm on top. Hey, I'm not going first. And I don't want to be buried alive. You probably are. I think you have a heart condition. I do not have a heart condition. How dare you? Oh, you have a. Uh, you know what I saw? I looked in your eyes. You say I saw impacted bowel. <laughs> <laughs> but you have the same thing. Well, I saw it in your eyes. Yeah, but I'm doing something about it. <laughs> all right, now, what does it? In all jokes aside, what it means to us in 50 or 60 years when Robin and I are lo no longer around to expose the truth, America will be having the same vote. And America will be trying to get out. The Spanish. But what state are they taking? They will take either Florida. As you know, there is a tremendous movement in this country among the 20-something million Hispanics to create a bilingual country, not to have a national language. Mm -hmm. The national language should be English. I don't say this out of any racist view. I say it because it's... Why, if you say right. we want to speak one language, it's racist? Exactly. Why? why? Why is that? Evidently, people think that. It is not the case. What it is doing it is sucking our economy dry. When you bring a, a foreigner over here to live, they must adapt to the ways of this country. We cannot afford to raise children in a bilingual society. All immigrants always came here and had to learn English. Is there English. any other country where you go there and they learn your language? No. <laughs> There's no other country. And because this country allows people in from all over the world, sometimes we don't even allow them in, they sneak in. They are sneaky little bastards who sneak in. <laughs> and we now have to raise their children. And they say to us, raise my child and raise them in a different language than you speak. And we can't afford to do this. It will destroy our country. So I predict that in 50 or 60 years, you will see the same vote here in the United States of America. And I'm not the only one saying this. Even Newt Gingrich is saying it. He understands the value of it. Absolutely. He said that this whole Canadian thing was an English lesson. That's right. He's right. He did say that. Because this is a country that has tried to survive with two languages. Yes, sir! And I'll tell you why I'm for the English language being the national language and not any other language. I know why. Because I speak it. That's right. That's right. And I'm good at it. I'm not going to go learn another you language. Know this one. I'm incapable. I live in a country where, listen, <laughs> I live in a country where I'm most comfortable speaking. Yes. I would have moved to France. Yes. I would have moved to a, some Hispanic tell you country. About the time I went to a bank somewhere in Queens. And, you know, right now, if you go to a bank in Manhattan, most of them will first ask you before they get you to the screen where right. you get your money whether you need the instructions in English or in Spanish. Yes. But I went to one in Queens where the choices were English, Spanish, and Farsi. Yeah, and no, I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that is. That's a good one. Farsi is, uh, you know, I think that's an eye condition. <laughs> And I'll tell you something. I uh, tried early on to learn Spanish, and I suck at Spanish. I admit it. I cannot speak the language. And I'm going to tell you something. It really isn't necessary because I'm happy living right here where I don't have to be confronted with it. And you know what? If you speak Spanish, that's all the better for you because now you have a secret little language, the one that you can, you can use. Keep you can keep secrets from everyone else, from, from real Americans. <laughs> Thank you. So you said that to say what? I don't know. I forget what I said. <laughs> so anyway, that's what happened in Canada yesterday. The uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is out with its new inductees for this year. <laughs> <laughs> Every year there seems there has to be a ceremony, and now that they have a museum, I suppose there'll be more and more. We will have this forever. So now we have everything from... Gladys Knight and the Pips. They're inducted. They were. They're going to be inducted this year to the Jefferson Airplane. Well, the Jefferson Airplane is inducted. They made it this year. They were just in here saying they'll never be inducted. Well, they were wrong. All right. This year, the Jefferson Airplane is being inducted into the Hall of Fame. The only one left is Bobby Goldsboro. He still has not received his induction. <laughs> Who else? Those are the two names, the two biggest names. But the big story here is that David Bowie is not going to be inducted. He doesn't like the whole thing. Oh, he doesn't? He is against the rock and roll. <laughs> Finally, a sane person. And has withdrawn his name <laughs> yeah. from consideration. He was asked about it on Rockline last night. What did he say? 
Well, tell me. You tell me. I, you, I, I have. I don't oh, have. I didn't tell Scott to pull that. No, you did that one. <laughs> he said, he says, I didn't want it. He says I still have a uh, problem with the idea of institutionalizing rock and roll. Don't institutionalize he finds them. It kind of disturbing, <laughs> and he's very ambivalent about it. So uh, he's still sitting on the fence. He hasn't made up his mind that he wants to do that. So anyway, here is, what is that guy's name, Yermo? Norma Kakonin. Kakonin. He's one of the original uh, airplanes. Yes. And he's very excited about being inducted. Yeah, absolutely. I'm thrilled, actually. I'm absolutely thrilled. And it's funny because, you know, you think about these things, you wonder, well, gosh, does this mean something to me or not? Well, the answer is yes, it does. Well, you know. Oh, good. There's only about 900 guys in the airplane at this point in 30 different versions. Well, that's what I say. Who shows up at the induction? Only God knows. God only knows. Well, Yermo is not in the current touring group. Yermo. He has an album of his own. Yermo. Uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And Yorma is the uh, the other 30 guys aren't speaking to Yorma, so it's going to be right. interesting. Yeah, he, and he even uh, says, you know, yeah, we had a lot of fighting in the group. It'll be interesting. I would love to see them get together on stage and have a big fight. Like on the Geraldo show when he gets punched <laughs> in the nose. Yeah. Uh, throwing chairs. Punching That'd be cool. in the middle of a song. we got to take a break, Rob, we'll finish up the news when we get back, okay? You're listening to The Howard Stern Show. 97.1 The Eagle. We're back with The Howard Stern Show. All right. Robin, what else is in the news? Remember the guy who uh, took the uh, dump on the food cart in that plane oh, yeah. last week? Yeah, that's what. Story. It's a businessman. Let me just recap, Robin. A businessman. This is what I understand, anyway. Okay. A businessman gets on a plane. He uh, has a couple of drinks. Keeps demanding more drinks. They tell him no, nope, can't have any more drinks. He freaks out. Starts pulling drinks off the cart. You trying to get the waitress, to, the stewardess, to waitress. pull the whatever she's going to get a stewardess. <laughs> Same thing, waitress. They won't give it. Finally, he tackles one of the waitresses, puts her in a chair, allegedly, <laughs> throws her down. Then he gets so mad, he just jumps into first class, squats. He was in first class. Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh, you uncover everything. <laughs> and then um, he jumps up on a serving tray of one of those big carts and makes duty in front of the whole crowd and then makes matters worse. He, he makes it do. He wipes with a with a with a napkin, a linen napkin, and then tracks paper and tracks duty all over the plane. That is the basic story. He actually twelve hour he flight. Got, he got so wild. Yeah. That he was throwing drinks on himself. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Give me toilet. Give me toilet paper. So here he is. You, you got a guy in your cabin now. He's throwing the drinks on himself. He's so drunk he doesn't even need to drink the liquor anymore. Wow. He absorbs it through his skin. <laughs> That's weird because he wants to drink so bad, uh, you know, according to them. And then they, he was just wasting the drinks and dumping yeah, them on himself. Yeah. He was throwing them on himself. And wow. then uh, he got out of hand, threatened to kick the, uh, or beat the ass of one flight attendant. Beat and, your ass. And then beat threw the other flight attendant into a chair. Jumped up on the card, did his business. If you behave like and, this, uh, I guess then he was done. If you behave like this in a club or something, you know, you, I mean, it's bad, but you, you know, no one to make a big deal. But whenever you do something like this, get rid of you. If you do something like this on a plane, people don't realize this is like federally regulated. It's sort of like when you cut the wires to our radio station, but with, in my case, they don't care. Right. To you, it can be done. Yeah. But with something like this on a plane, it's you can endanger the lives of other, you know, flyers. Well, the the question is, if he's so out of control, what's to stop him from then going into the cockpit and messing with the control? Right. He's a, an out of control character. You don't know what he'll do. He's a danger to everyone on board. And everyone on board hate him. I mean, even Jackie lost respect for him because he took booze and just spilled it. Well, he he didn't handle his liquor well. Right. And Jackie doesn't have scotch. any respect for that. How could you take perfectly good scotch and uh, pour it all over his uh, you know what's interesting? Go the ladies first. We find out more and more about this flight. They wanted, the pilot was so disturbed by this guy's behavior, he wanted to land the plane in Puerto Rico. Right. And kick the guy off. That's what they usually do. But they wouldn't allow him to do that because the guy was traveling with dignitaries. Oh, I see. <laughs> he was traveling with the president of Argentina. He wasn't with them. And the president of Portugal. He wasn't with them, was he? He was just on the same plane as them. I, let me see, buddy. 
I think he was on the same plane as them. No, but, two of them are, well, fellow passengers, right. I say. It doesn't say he was actually with them. But right. the way it was, I originally read it, I thought, oh, my God, he was traveling with them? Well, he was on the same plane as them, and I guess the dignitaries feel... No, no, no. They were on their way here for the 50th anniversary celebration of the United Nations. They had a schedule to keep. Oh, oh God forbid so, they that. The Secret Service were there in Kennedy Airport waiting for them, I so see. they didn't want to stop the plane for that reason. But can you imagine these guys are sitting there? They didn't want to get off the plane with this guy. <laughs> they wanted to stay on the duty plane. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're on a plane, you just want to get to your destination. You don't care how many people making duty. Happy <laughs> anniversary, you I think I would have wanted to get off. Oh, can't a guy smear a little fecal, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I wanted to, I brought Can up I the story again back? because I had more information for you. The man who, uh, the man in question, the duty man, has been grounded. In what respect? He cannot fly on a plane yeah. for the time being without federal permission. So oh, he have to go oh, somewhere. Yeah. He can't get on a commercial plane. What if it's an emergency? He would have to get permission. He still has to get permission. Yeah. If he wants to fly, I guess he'll have to do it with a private plane. And he's still under a $100,000 bail. He hasn't paid up? Or he has. No, he's, he's paid, paid up. up. That's how he got out. But they're not giving back the bail money. They are keeping the bail money. Yeah. And he's going to have to undergo some kind of an evaluation <laughs> to determine if he has an alcohol abuse problem. <laughs> and this guy's real important. He's the president of some big company. Yeah, he used to work for some big companies. Now he's the president of a company of his own. He's lucky or else they'd fire him. I was toilet trained wrong. <laughs> his lawyer is still saying it didn't happen. Wow. Now, how could you do I mean, the man was on a plane. Denied he was seen. Denied, denied. O.J. did it. <laughs> I mean, nobody was, you know, come on. Everyone has learned. How can he sit there and say this didn't happen? It doesn't matter. People go, we saw you do it. I didn't do it. Didn't do what it. did you see? Where's your tape? Where's your videotape? Well, we have fecal evidence. That's <laughs> not my feces. That's contaminated. They planted it. Mark Furman planted the feces. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah, that's not my feces. I mean, yeah, it's my feces, but they got it out of my toilet. <laughs> I never flush. This guy actually was in the courtroom yesterday. His name is Gerard Finnerman, and he looked stone-faced, yeah. according to this account, during yesterday's court session. And what is this? He Someone said that during his court session, he peed in the corner of the courtroom? <laughs> what was that all about? Didn't do it. Didn't do it. All right. Can I puke on the bailiff? <laughs> 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 yep, we cannot <laughs> take a flight. Uh, the animals pee wherever they want. Why can't we? Mark my territory. <laughs> cannot take a commercial flight without federal permission. Hey, Judge, can I wipe with your robe? <laughs> he will not be flying our friendly sky. Thank Christ. A Queens woman has... Uh, Doesn't the guy handle, like, tons of money and stuff, financial? Oh, it's a trust company. Yeah. You know, it's one of those big uh, financial houses. Wow. <laughs> Hard to believe. He just maybe... If he did it, he must have cracked. He just must have uh, flipped out. <laughs> I certainly wish we could talk to him. <laughs> well, when are we going to make that happen? <laughs> Gary, try to get a hold of the guy. Did he? See if he wants to talk. Hey, Gary, get a, get a hold of him. What else is in the news, Robin? A Queens woman charged yesterday that her life has become a nightmare because she has found out that a breast was removed. Her breast was removed, and it didn't have to be. She was misdiagnosed with cancer. They did a mastectomy. And then a couple of months later, a doctor admitted that uh, they had made a mistake and the breast did not have to be removed. So why would a doctor admit to it? I mean, Well, she had asked for her medical records so that she could show them to another doctor. I see. Because uh, she wanted to get some independent advice on post-operative chemotherapy. And then they became reluctant to give her these records. And finally, they just said, you know, we're going to have to fess up. <laughs> why would they make a record of that, though, Robin? Why wouldn't they... Um... You know, falsify the record and say, yeah, we removed her breast, it was cancerous, and that's it. Well, what you would have to do then is go get cancerous slides and put them in her folder. Oh, I see. In other words, there was no, uh, there was, uh, the diagnosis was made that she didn't have cancer and someone ignored it and just removed her breast anyway. Yeah, somehow or other, they, they, mis they misread the, the samples that were there. 
and they determined that she had cancer. And then when they looked at him again, they, the breast was already gone. So what you're saying is... And they is, realized there was no cancer. It would have been too much to cover up, I think. I see. So while she has no boob, the doctor is a boob. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm sure he's going to have to pay. Right. There's going to be a, a major lawsuit, and she is asking for unspecified damages. Yeah. Yeah, they don't pay attention. Cut off his nuts. <laughs> <laughs> a wealthy Brooklyn businessman ah, missing for ah, two weeks ah, was killed ah, by his young boyfriend <laughs> and dismembered with a hacksaw. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Tanner. So some guy had a gay was boyfriend? Just about yeah. to sell his prosperous leather goods business and move yeah. to Arizona yeah. when everything came to a clue number one. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> leather, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, calm yeah, down. Yeah, hot mirror Nishkin Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Grandpa. Frightening fairy night, yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happened. He met this guy about, what, eight weeks ago at a bar? <laughs> yeah. And they hit it off. <laughs> so they started hanging out together. Billy even has a grandpa mask on today for Halloween. Is that yeah, right? yeah, look I at him. Turn what around. What yeah. was he had on his face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's hysterical. Yeah. Queers love that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Leather. Well, anyway. Face I... leather. Find a fag. Oh, dear. Emotional have... queers. How rare. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on, Grandpa. I wish I could get the story out. Go ahead. Happy Halloween. Yeah. Anyway, the young lover, I guess thought, you know, he'd fallen into the lap of luxury yeah. here, and he went out and spent a lot of money on clothing and used uh, his new boyfriend's credit card. This caused them to get into a heated argument, the police were called, and the young lover was thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he didn't take Psycho that homo. too well, so <laughs> he uh, set up an ambush for the businessman, caught him, Thanks. grabbed him, threw yeah. him in the trunk. Yeah. of a car and yeah, drove front, to Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Once he got to Kentucky, <laughs> he drove to the parking lot of a fast food restaurant, took out a hacksaw and hacked him up into about five, six different pieces. Wow. Yeah. And uh, threw him in dumpsters. Hell, Billy faggot. Yeah. What? Hell, Billy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happy swallowing. Don't yeah. Know exactly Bottoms up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly how Mr. Yeah. Tanner met his death, but right. I do believe that he was dead before he was dismembered. They think maybe wow. he suffocated in the car. That's the worst. And they don't think that they may ever find all the body parts. Dismembered. So a yeah. lot of forensic evidence in the trunk. I always think dismembered is they cut your penis off. Because you're member. But it's well, they cut your head off. It's all of you, oh, actually. It? It's, you know, dismembered is to cut you up. But What's disemboweled? Disemboweled is to rip you open. Wow. Well, you know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> What's anti-disestablishmentarianism? That I'm still not sure of. Yeah. 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 Old Mo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the young Mo killed the old Mo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Yeah. I bet, he, went after I Charlie... bet he was smoking a pink cigar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Newlywed actor Charlie yeah. Sheen is and bobbing for left. each other yeah, with yeah, a yeah. lawsuit, Howard. Charlie Sheen is being hit with a lawsuit. Yes, it's hard to believe. He seems so in control. <laughs> yeah, big square head. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> filed in Los Angeles big last blank. week. Our Kateri Foods is asking for unspecified damages <laughs> for an October 27th, 1994 incident. Our Kateri Foods. <laughs> Foods is the woman suing him? Yes. Our Kateri Foods. Swing him from the left. In court papers, Foods says she met Sheen Four. at a bar and then went to a penthouse. Cross on Wilshire Boulevard with him <laughs> and two other people who were not identified. The suit accuses Sheen of demanding sex. And when she refused, he got a little out of hand. He came enraged and struck the plaintiff repeatedly in the head and face for her refusal. He allegedly ordered Booth to leave the apartment and threatened to have her killed if she told anyone about the incident. Doesn't he get a lot? I mean... Well, he had to pay for Heidi Flies to bring him hookers. Right. Maybe he just doesn't have a good rap. Who knows? He says he, he never met her. He, he says that about this girl, yeah. sure. Yeah. But he also said uh, he only knew Heidi Flies for a while, anyway. Architectural foos. 
I feel bad for her. Jean allegedly ordered food. I told you that part. Foo says she's now unable to work and needs continuing medical treatment for her injuries. Don't <laughs> <laughs> food. And now she wants Charlie Sheen to pay. And his lawyers are saying he doesn't remember any such meeting. So. That's a good one. <laughs> we'll have to see how that all works out. Well, a lot of celebrities are set up sometimes. You don't know what the answer you is there. You never know, Howard. I just report these stories. I don't get phones. See you in court. They apparently had a good night in Detroit last night. No burning of the uh, city? Yeah, Hell Night was rather quiet, and they think that maybe they've gotten things under control there. Or they. maybe there's no... They. They. Uh, maybe... Yeah. How dare you, Robin? What? What are they? I them. The Detroit officials. Oh, I see them. I thought you meant them. What are you? I'm not one of those they and them persons. Really? I thought maybe you had changed. Yeah. No. Nope. Devices. Yeah. Yeah. You're racially divisive. Yeah. Not. Maybe there's no more buildings left to burn. Maybe they're all burned down. Well, they used to burn abandoned buildings. Right, but maybe everything's been burned to the ground. Oh, you think there's no more kindling? Yeah. <laughs> You've been out in the woods when there's no kindling. What do you burn? Nothing. You stand there. Yeah, kindling. Well, they had an army of 30,000 volunteers on the street in Detroit, uh. all to prevent a repeat of last year when 182 fires roared throughout the city in pre-Halloween fun. God bless the black people of Detroit. They love to burn their city. Unbelievable. So I'm very proud of them today. They they really hung in there, and they didn't burn down their city again. They say this time everybody was trying to make a difference. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Maybe this Farrakhan thing had something to do with it. It's a great I don't day know. when they don't burn their own city. Isn't it a great day? They. Yeah, they. When they don't burn down their city? Oh, <laughs> I they. didn't say that. You guys are putting that? words in my mouth. Hell night. Hell night. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hell Knight has uh, transported itself to Camden, New Jersey. Uh-oh. Camden, now that's a white neighborhood, isn't it? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do over in Camden? Uh, there were fires. Fires in Camden? Yeah, they had a lot of burning. A lot of kindling over there. Yeah, they have kindling. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of buildings to burn. Well, one would hope that uh, they will look at the example of Detroit and... Maybe stop burning their own buildings. Let us hope. People of Camden. People of Earth. Detroit is no place to mimic. Exactly. Anything you see going on in Detroit, <laughs> do the opposite. Are your children trick-or-treating this year? In a related story, the people of Great Neck on uh, Hell Night just sat in their homes, watched television. <laughs> Nothing happened. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> While you're at it, burn the dead fag, do you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile. Hell night, yeah. They are yeah. trying What is wrong with you? You are such a homophobe. Yeah. You are so. Yeah. a phobe. Yeah. You're not funny. Xenophobe. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take that mask to, off. Uh, Look at that mask. Export <laughs> Halloween. With, yeah. To your... With anal sex every night is hell night. Oh, yeah. dear. Oh, come on. Yeah, That's devil outrageous. tree. Yeah. Devil yeah. tree. Yeah. <laughs> the mask kind of makes it. Show Robin your mask again. <laughs> yeah. Shane and Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> Do but your they're news. Trying, they're yeah. trying to trans uh, or Im uh, export Halloween to Europe, and it's not really working all that well. Right. The French just don't get what Halloween is all about, especially the concept of going door to door and knocking on people's strangers' doors. So a lot of times they throw canned food <laughs> into your Halloween bag. Really? Yeah. Where is this? In France. They don't know what to do. They're they're totally disturbed by Halloween. They don't like it. No. And so when you go to their door, they you know they throw loose food or canned food. No. You know, Snail. Break your bag. Uh, so you're from France. You do not like Halloween? That's like it. You don't like it. It's a candy, but it gets frog's legs. All right, and you, you throw frog's legs frig's in the... Frog's legs and snails. Yeah, right, in their, in their bag. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And a piece of ass, too. Really? Go suck a souffle. The French say it is completely against their culture <laughs> to have people running around with... <laughs> Playing tricks and then asking for treats. So what you're saying is this is an American thing, sir? Wait. And you don't like what the Americans do? it. To the fact that somebody has put out a recipe for a witch's brew. Oh, my. 
That's horrible. <laughs> that will ruin the world. That's a good one. It's a very pagan holiday, of course, but it's a fun uh, festive event. Little children love it. My kids love it. They say this witch's brew made from spinach and grapes is meant to look like floating eyeballs. <laughs> and doesn't belong in the cookery column of the church times. <laughs> People are really <laughs> uptight, man. <laughs> Have a little fun. Sure, maybe we'll be uh, seen as spoil sports, but we think it's the wrong thing. It's sending the wrong signal. Do these people know about anything going on in the world? Like there's like 50 billion hungry children <laughs> in the world, and there's like, you know, people killing each other, and there's AIDS. Nope, and this is the only thing. This is what they know. About. A recipe in a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. It's like that guy who's screaming about uh, Oprah and Phil, and he's yeah. screaming about Ricky Lake, and uh, you know, what's that guy? What's that guy's name? William Bennett. William Bennett. Yeah, that's what he, he does. He does. He doesn't know. He doesn't see anything else going on. This is what he's worried about. Grandstanding. People dying in the streets. To the. the, the <laughs> I, can't, I can't even name all the problems. People are poor. They have nothing to eat. They. They're not, they AIDS babies have no homes. They're dying. It's there's orphans. This is, this is what they worry about. TV guys, shows. Guys doting on planes. Right. <laughs> and yet Katie Couric is scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she wasn't. Yes, well, in uh, Camden, official figures won't be in until this afternoon, but Camden City officials reported only eight fires last night. I see. Well, that's not so, so bad, Robin. Well. <laughs> Come on. One fire is bad. Of course. But, you know, listen. They had a community-wide effort out last night to stop mischief night, too. Could have been 80 fires. <laughs> you know, so it's eight They now. think that it apparently paid off. Well, listen, I, I, I think that proves that uh, our black American uh, cities... Why now do you have to say, once again say... Our I think this proves our black American cities are <laughs> capable of not lighting fires. This is not a black city. This is a city. Camden? Yeah. Where, where you see any white people there? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. They don't like the cold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Robin? Yes. Uh, they. I guess somebody has been running around saying we should uh, reduce the penalty for smoking crack. <laughs> Well, you know why? A lot of uh, black leaders are saying it is a... Now, here you go with the black... No, no, no. I, I, I was watching a TV show. A lot of black leaders are saying that it is a racist sentence to sentence people to extra years for crack when a lot of you whiteys are doing coke, but you get lesser sentences. <laughs> so, since blacks like to do crack more than whites... They're giving a stiffer penalty for crack. Can you imagine? I saw this discussion on Meet the Press. I said, you know, why don't I get a gun and blow my brains out? Because oh, the world's going to hell. Well, the Supreme Court is going to take up the issue of oh, whether good. That's important. crack could... cocaine sentences should be harsher than those for powdered cocaine. Well, that's something important for the uh, Supreme Court to decide. The justices say they will review rulings that threw, uh, threw out federal indictments against five men who had been charged with dealing crack in the Los Angeles area. The men claim they were made the targets of federal prosecution because they were black. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not because they were doing anything illegal? No. Boy, oh boy, what are we coming to? I, I hope they take a lot of time with that decision because there's nothing more important. Well, you know, one of the arguments about all the black men in jail is that it's because of drugs. <laughs> you could stop taking them. Yeah, you don't have to get involved. There's a way to stay out of <laughs> It's very simple. It's a simple answer. <laughs> Nobody seems to see that one, though. That eludes them. Well, you see it. I see it. Grandpa doesn't. I don't see nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else, Robin? Queers love crack, too. Oh, come on. Yes. Stop it. Yeah. You're a homophobe and a racist. Yeah, that tree. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? He, he said nothing. He's talking yeah. about a different kind of crack. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Let me see. Where's this story? Fun house. Yeah. Lock them all up. Oh, yeah. I wanted to tell you in that the Camden guy... and Target. Oh, I just ignored him. Poof! Yeah. Do you know the name Terry Southern? Terry Southern, yes. yes. I painted the... her breast. No, no, no. Oh. He wrote the screenplays for Easy Rider and Doctor Strange Love. Two excellent movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, he died on Sunday night in New York. He was 71 years old. Collapsed last Wednesday at Columbia University, where he taught a screenwriting course. Was it writing class? Yes, it's a 
best way to go. The students always love that. <laughs> so dramatic. Go out acting. with a bang. Right. They thought he was doing an acting uh, session. Go. By the way, his death has not been determined. Terry and Southern. Going to do an autopsy. What? <laughs> I'd like to do a little eulogy. Terry Southern was a great writer. He wrote uh, Easy Rider. He wrote, uh, of course, what you just said. Dr. Dr. Strange Dr. Love. Dr. Strange Love. And never sold a joke tape or a mug. <laughs> Went through his entire life without yeah, having to reduce himself to that. To be commended for. <laughs> hey, come on, two for one sale. Halloween yeah. <laughs> and a close call for uh, outfielder Gary Sheffield of the oh. Florida Marlins. He was released from a Tampa, Florida hospital after being shot during a robbery attempt on Monday night. <laughs> Sheffield was in his car and he stopped at a traffic, traffic light when someone walked up and shot him through the closed driver's side window. Mm -hmm. He was able to drive to a phone and call for help. Here is a spokesman for the team, Chuck Poole, to talk about the injury. Our understanding uh, is that he was shot in the left shoulder that the wound is of a uh, uh, superficial nature and that uh, uh, it did not lodge or, or damage any of the areas of the shoulder. Yeah. So, luckily, he was not shot full on and didn't cause the bullet to enter his shoulder area. They say they have no suspect at this time. They're only witness. Say, the you police! Go again. The police! Did Good they Lord. get away? Oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, maybe police? now he'll practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The police now, at this present time, yeah. have no suspect, Baseball. Howard. Yeah. Girl came. Yeah. And they only witness yeah. they have Men is Mr. Bass. Sheffield. Yeah. Full right. grown men, balls are bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Running for bases. Yeah. And Eggs with very sticks little, is what they are. Yeah. Little is known yeah. about the assailant. Yeah. That's what's happening. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What Dress is up. It? Yeah. <laughs> Who's that on first? Judy Garland? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, thank you. Colin Powell's wife <laughs> gets in the news. They say that Alma Pyle yes. suffers from depression. Pyle. That's Goma Pyle. Oh, wife. I'm sorry, Powell. That's right. <laughs> Alma Powell <laughs> suffers from depression and has been treated for a chemical imbalance since being diagnosed more than 10 years ago. That's according to the latest issue of Newsweek. What's she on? You know, they say this is the kind of thing that keeps Colin Powell from running for president. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. So, is it true or not? Seems to be. Alma Powell has told uh, people that she doesn't want her husband to run for president for fear that uh, it would be an intrusion into their private lives. Yeah, no kidding. She's all and depressed. She has concerns about his safety. Powell has had depression. Boy, that she must be a load of laughs to live with. Poor, you know, you know what? That even is more reason why he shouldn't be president. But they don't think it's a big deal in the family. Yeah, it's no big deal. <laughs> you know, and it makes you start wondering, like, what's going on in that marriage that she's so depressed? Uh, hey, it could be a chemical imbalance, Howard. <laughs> could be. It doesn't have to be his fault. No, it's not necessarily his fault. That's true. I mean, it really isn't. And couldn't you run for president even if your wife is on the antidepressant? You know, that's sort of like saying, can't Jackie be normal without that wife at his side? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is a whole big deal now. Now they're going to tear the whole family apart looking for the skeleton. All you have to say in this country is you're depressed and they give you a whole bunch of cool drugs and it's perfectly legal. <laughs> well, that's what doctors in the business of. Yeah. You can't fault them. That's why stuff like crack is illegal because doctors can't prescribe it. and There's no control. Yeah. It's just out there on the street. Yeah, it's, it's too cheap. <laughs> They'd rather legislate it and let doc you have to go to a doctor's visit and pay 135 bucks for five minutes so he can put you on it. There you go. Right. Well, that's what's happening. Thank you, Robin. Corbers of Life out there in the stores today. And, uh... I have a heart condition. Give me a joint. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's praying for glaucoma. <laughs> Meanwhile, Billy's wearing the grandpa mask and doing a Jackie impression. <laughs> Sorry. He's confused. Jack and oh, Joe. Speaking of him with his grandpa mask on, you know they're they're bringing back the, the monsters. monsters. Yeah. Tonight on Fox, there's going to be some kind of monster special. Here is Ed 
Edward Herman, who is playing Herman, Herman Munster. Oh, that's funny. Oh. <laughs> I borrowed some of uh, Fred Gwynn's laugh. You know, he had that great thundering laugh, and he would slap things, and the camera would shake, and the house would fall down. <laughs> so he has borrowed generously from the portrayal of Fred Gwynn. As he should, because n none of these sequels will ever be able to top the original Munsters, which was two years, and those characters were so perfect that you cannot do this sort of going back in time and recapturing it. It was th When it was there, that's when they should have made a million episodes. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting to me? People used to laugh at, you know, the guy who played Gomez. Yeah, he's great. He with stupid acting jobs, and this is, you know, beneath you if you're really a fine actor. And they used to laugh at Fred Gwynn and stereotype him and typecast him and not give him other jobs. And now, legitimate actors are taking these roles. And they can't, you know, they can't they even can't come close. They can't them. Yeah, well as yeah, it was of its time, Robin. Right, Grandpa. The show was of its time. It doesn't work now. Yeah. <laughs> you can't put two things together. Like, uh, if you give amyl nitrate to a normal person, nothing happens. But fags love amyl nitrate. <laughs> All right. Jackie, you know, you were trying to make a good... results. Yeah. You were making sense for a while there. Yeah. All yeah. Right. yeah. Can't do that for too long. <laughs> Jackie, the joke... Fag man. directors ruined television. Oh, Didn't really? used to be like that in the old days. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie, the joke yeah. man, Marcus. You got these young ones with the ponytails and the clipboards. And you, yeah. Jackie the Joke Man Martley, his hysterical 90-minute filthy joke video, Who Farted I Smelt It? Only $15 plus $4 shipping and handling. Halloween special, buy two, get one free. Call 1-800-323-KING. There's not a dry sphincter in Hollywood. Visit Jokeland on the World Wide Web for dirty jokes and Jokeland's internet address. Call 516-9221. Join King Norris. Unplug this Saturday at the Long Island Brewing Company in Jericho, Long Island. And don't miss Baba Louie at Software, etc. On Route 22 West in Springfield, New Jersey, this Saturday from noon to 2 p.m. Handing out software for Prodigy and also Don't Miss Stuttering John appearing in Tony and Tina's wedding every Wednesday and Thursday night. For more information, to get a signed copy of John's CD, call 201942-OUCH. And if you're planning a wedding or a corporate event and you need a great DJ, call Scott the Engineer's Rocket Entertainment at 718-BAG-5040. We'll see you tomorrow.